All right, so yes, the RTX 5090 might be a $2,000 or more GPU that you probably can't buy and most people absolutely should not buy. But what this GPU does is it allows us to do some very interesting evaluations here. Because it is the most powerful GPU on the planet right now, it can help us answer a couple of burning questions about potential CPU limitations now and how those CPU limitations could affect your upgrade plans into the future. For example, is the 5800X3D, a legendary processor, still good enough for the next few GPU upgrade cycles? Does Intel's Arrow Lake using the latest updates still get crushed by the 9800X3D and so on. Anyways, the focus here will be processor scaling on higher end CPUs that would normally be paired with the fastest GPU on the planet. Of course, there's the 9800X3D and 285K, but I also wanted to include AMD's current flagship, the 9950X. Finally, there's top tier X3D gaming CPUs from the last few years, and also Intel's previous top dog, the 14900K. And before we go any further, I want it to be perfectly transparent here. The entire testing process for these various platforms with the RTX 5090, it didn't go according to plan. We encountered a bunch of stability problems, both with Nvidia's weirdly immature drivers and with some very specific platform conflicts. For example, on the 14900K system, Hogwarts Legacy constantly crashed to the desktop without any error message. And we tried updating the game, changing resolutions, absolutely everything, and it didn't help. With the 7800X3D installed, Warhammer 3 Total War had random visual artifacts like half of the maps turning blood red and huge performance drop-offs that happened three quarters of the time when we opened any of our save games or the built-in benchmarking tool. And last but not least, the 285K system, well, every single time we open up Space Marine, it's simply BSOD'd, and we could not find a workaround. And supposedly, we're not the only people who encountered this. Now, just to double check our sanity, what we did is we installed an RTX 4080 in every single one of these same systems and reloaded these sort of issue-prone games, and not one of them had any problems whatsoever. So in a lot of ways, this is very much platform conflicts with the RTX 5000 series. I should also mention the way that we're going about this video is very different from our classic CPU review process, where we test at 720p low and 1080p highest settings. I wanted this video to more properly reflect what people buying high-end GPUs would expect, and that's the absolute maximum settings at 1440p and 4K. For all the charts, 1440p will be on the left and 4K on the right. The first thing I want to talk about here is simple GPU utilization. Because typically, in most situations, if a GPU isn't fully utilized, that points towards there being a bottleneck somewhere in your system. A lot of the times, the CPU is pointed out as the culprit, but that is not always the case. So let's start with the 9800X3D, and at 1440p in most situations, the GPU is maxed out, though there are some exceptions. Baldur's Gate, Space Marine 2, and Spider-Man are the biggest offenders, while Hogwarts and Starfield also get in on the action, though to a lesser extent. However, moving to 4K shows a lot of those bottlenecks are cleared up, which increases the likelihood of them being CPU CPU bottleneck at 1440p. However, the numbers from Hogwarts and Baldur's Gate point towards there potentially being some game engine limitations here too. Now, if we overlay the 9950X onto this, at 1440p, there are a lot more situations where the GPU simply fails to reach its full output potential. As a matter of fact, the overall percentage gets dragged under 90% since its dual CCD layout doesn't play nice with some games. It claws that disadvantage back at 4K, but Space Marine 2 and Baldur's Gate still have some issues. There the ironic thing is that at both 1440p and 4K, the older 7800X3D actually manages to get better overall utilization numbers than the brand new 9950X. And technically, that should also lead to marginally better performance too. But what I really wanted to focus on here is a 5800X3D, because at 1440p, its average GPU usage number might not look that good at just 79%, but it's actually heavily influenced by the usual suspects like Spider-Man, Space Marine, Starfield, and Baldur's Gate. Though this time, other CPU-bound titles like CS2 and Cyberpunk 
also get impacted. Moving on to 4K and it's obvious the 5800 X3D's clock speed disadvantage is the main culprit in those situations at 1440p. But most of those issues are completely nullified when gaming at even higher resolutions. It should be interesting to see how these numbers actually translate into frame rates though. Overlaying the 285K onto this and it's obvious that Intel's pains really haven't been solved, particularly at 1440p where it seems to be bottlenecking the 5090 in a lot of games. It even has some issues at 4K. I mean, look at CS2 and Warhammer. Its numbers actually go downwards and that signals a potential optimization issue. As a matter of fact, if we compare it to the 7800X3D and exclude Space Marine, which crashed on the Intel system, that two-year-old CPU actually gets better numbers overall than Intel's newest flagship, sometimes by a pretty wide margin. And it gets even worse for Intel. The 4900K has just as many games below the 90% mark as there were above it at 1440p. Naturally, the situation improves a whole lot at 4K, but check this out. If we add the 5800X3D numbers to this, these two processors are neck and neck. And what that initially points to is that AMD's older X3D chips, even the ones on the AM4 platform, could still have tons of potential left in them for years to come. Now, what I wanted to see is how does that utilization translate into actual real world gaming performance. Let's start with Alan Wake. And I should mention that to distinguish things a bit better, the newest CPUs in these charts will be in brighter colors while the older ones will be a bit darker. Their positioning, however, it's not gonna change, so it's easier to follow along. Anyways, here the 9800X3D is clearly ahead of other Ryzen CPUs at 1440p, while the 285K posts some impressive results too that are a bit better than the 4900K. The 5800X3D, meanwhile, actually posts very good averages, but it's 1% lows, those tend to suffer. And that carries over to 4K, though at that resolution, the only CPU that really stands out is the 9800X3D again. Black Myth Wukong is an extremely GPU heavy game, which is why it maxed out utilization on every CPU at both resolutions. As a result, there's a literal log jam with all the processors getting about the same frame rates. The only exception to that is the 285K at 1440p, which sees its 1% lows drop by a bit. Meanwhile, Baldur's Gate is an absolute nightmare situation for most processors with the 9800X3D and 7800X3D being the only ones with consistent results. Those Intel processors, they get hammered at both resolutions to the point where the 5800X3D is again able to match the 285K's averages, though its 1% lows are the worst here. Overall, this game is just all over the place, and it doesn't favor higher thread counts either based on the 9950X results. There's two things that CS2 absolutely loves higher clock speeds, and plenty of cache, so the X3D models get amazing results at both resolutions, with the 9800X3D's 1% lows at 1440p being almost unbelievably high. The 5800X3D, meanwhile, is essentially tied with the 7800X3D, while the 285K ends up getting inconsistent frame rates at both resolutions. So there's obviously something going wrong behind the scenes here, because Intel processors used to dominate in this game. Now, normally you think, a title as graphically demanding as Cyberpunk would be GPU limited. And at 4K, it absolutely is. But at 1440p, there's some clear distinctions between these processors with the 285K putting down some good numbers, essentially matching the 9800X3D and 7800X3D. And the 5800X3D, well, it might be an underdog, but its frame rates compete pretty well with the 4900K. Doom is another game where the 285K's inconsistency really shows its face again. It's the best processor at 1440p, but the worst at 4K. I should also mention this is one of the first times where the 9950X ends up competing directly with the 9800X3D. But other than some 1% frame rate falloffs at 1440p, all the Ryzen processors do pretty good here. We're also coming to the point in this video where Intel's inconsistency starts leading to some outright stability problems for the 285K. And that's too bad since if the 4900K's numbers are anything to go by, it could have done very, very well. Switching to the AMD side, it's obvious that our original review of the 9800X3D didn't show its true potential. Even at high resolutions and the absolute maximum detail settings, it's still able to deliver a much better gaming experience than any of the other Ryzen processors. And speaking of those, at least in this game, the 5800X3D is starting to show its age, especially at 4K, where the AM5 processors get significantly better performance. Hogwarts, well, that flips the Intel situation onto its head, with the 4900K now crashing the game with the RTX 5090 installed. But taking that out of the equation, what we have here is a largely 
heavily GPU bound situation. So the 9800X3D, 7800X3D, and 9950X get pretty much identical results. The only processor that's a bit behind, especially in 1% lows, is that 5800X3D. And what continues to amaze me is how the RTX 5090 allows some processors to really flex their muscles. With an RTX 4090, some of these games had identical performance for most CPUs, but now there's some clear winners. I mean, we still get into GPU limited scenarios at 4K, but at 1440p, the 9800X3D is the clearly superior option when you look at its 1% lows. And yet there are always going to be situations that run into that GPU wall, even with the most powerful graphics card on the planet right now. And outside some variants in 1% lows, that pretty much levels the playing field for every processor here. Rainbow Six is another one of those games that has a pretty heavy GPU cap, with the 5800X3D being the only CPU that has notably lower frame rates at 1440p and 4K. And that's been this story in a lot of titles. The oldest X3D chip holds strong in averages, but frame rate delivery does tend to get impacted versus newer solutions. And you might remember Spider-Man as being one of the worst offenders when it came to low GPU utilization across every single processor here. The end result is the 9800X3D outperforming everything by a wide margin, the 9950X completely underperforming, and the Intel chips putting in some pretty competitive numbers. Meanwhile, using the 5800X3D with an RTX 5090 will leave quite a bit of performance on the table even at 4K. Starfield, meanwhile, well, that's a game where we finally see some glimmers of hope for Intel, with both of their processors being well positioned versus the AMD alternatives. But this also ends up looking terrible for the 285K, since it can't seem to win against the 14900K. And while there's a distinct GPU bottleneck at 4K, 1440p shows that the AM5 based X3D chips are able to clearly distance themselves from the 5800X3D, with those 1% lows being the biggest differentiating factor. And the final stop here is Warhammer 3, and we're back to being GPU bound even into the 99th percentile frame rates. There is one exception though. The i9-285K just falls apart at 4K, becoming a stuttering mess. That points towards a clear lack of platform specific optimizations here. And after seeing these results, I sort of like want to drag you back to our 9800X3D review. Because back then, I hypothesized that the RTX 4090 was probably holding that CPU back. And back then, we saw about a 4% uplift in performance at 1080p high between the 9800X3D and 7800X3D. Well, now with higher detail settings and higher resolutions, plus the RTX 5090, what is gonna change? Well, that same 4% boost is here too, but this time it's at 4K, while the gap grows even more at 1440p to 6%, with a huge 18% jump in 1% lows. Also, if we go down like a hypothetical route here, the RTX 5090 potentially has the performance of the next generation, say RTX 6070 Ti. And this puts people with that amazing 5800X3D in an interesting position. While it leaves some performance on the table at 1440p, this is still a remarkably capable processor that comes close to the 9950X in gaming. So if you don't want to buy a GPU that costs more than $2,000 and is basically unobtainium right now, and nothing drastically improves with the performance trajectory of future GPUs, the 5800X3D should absolutely last you for a few more years, at the very least. These numbers also highlight another potential red flag, and it's actually for AMD's upcoming processors. That 9950X3D is, we all know, coming down the pipeline. And based on the 9950X's results here, well, AMD has a few problems because Windows and their own optimizations are not allowing that single CCD to play an exclusive part in gaming performance. And whenever tasks are shifted to the second CCD, which happens in a bunch of games, you see a performance fall off. And I'm willing to bet, regardless of how much 3D vCache is on that chip, you cannot compensate for that one issue. As for Intel, we need to change this chart just a little bit to remove Space Marine and Hogwarts, since their crashes deflated the overall results. Well, it actually seems like after months of fiddling with their platform, the 285K squeezes out a very narrow win over the 14900K at both resolutions. I mean, 1% lows still lag pretty far behind AMD's alternatives, but at least 
that's a small win, right? And one thing you didn't see up until now is RT performance. Well, since there's so much focus placed on the GPU in those scenarios, most games end up with a close five-way tie with the only outlier being the 5800X3D. And while things are still close, there are some intrinsic differences I wanted to talk about. Again, without Hogwarts taking into the equation to level out the playing field, the Intel CPUs actually do quite well at both resolutions, but the 9800X3D really does show that it's got a lot left in the tank. At 1440p, it's almost 10% ahead of the next fastest AMD CPU and still comfortably leads Intel's fastest option. So where does this all leave us? And I'll be very straightforward here. I was absolutely shocked at some of the results that we were seeing because typically in these scenarios, 1440p, 4K with the highest possible settings, well, we run into GPU limitations far before we would see any type of CPU bottlenecking. But in this situation, we're actually seeing certain processors, especially the 9800X3D, stretching their legs even further than we ever imagined. So I guess that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this little video where we dove a little bit deeper into a subject that a lot of you guys have been asking for. If you have any other ideas that you wanna put onto the table, this is the place to do it. The comment thread down below. I read almost every single comment. So anyways, until the next video, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and have a great day, guys. Take care.